So some time ago, I noticed a very interesting 775 CPU for sale on eBay. It's some very rare Conroe-based 775 engineering sample CPU. So it doesn't have much information on top of the CPU's IHS, but according to the sales like pictures and so on, the stock frequency is the very same, so 2.4 gigahertz. But it doesn't have much information on the IHS, as you can see, the code for this CPU model is Q, S, H, C, and then we have E, S, which stands for engineering sample and A4. We don't have much information, as you can see, but the batch number is very interesting. So it's C, 6, so United States of America, 2006, but then 39. So week 39 of 2006. That's interesting because we have seen retail E6600 CPUs with much older batch number on top of the IHS. So this could be some very interesting like uh, E6600 or Conroe engineering samples. On demo version I have absolutely no idea but I couldn't find much information about the CPU from Google for example. So I thought about testing this CPU out with you guys and I will report like is it any interesting from overclocking perspective. From like use perspective pretty much no uh, value nowadays as you can't really use this old CPU for reasonable daily computer anymore. But for overclocking, sometimes these very old engineering sample CPUs can be very good. We have seen cases where engineering sample can be much better than their retail counterparts, both among new and old generations. Like on new, we have seen that some of the engineering samples among newer generations are very good, like Coffee Lake 8700K and so on. And uh, even among older generations, like for example, 980X is a perfect like example. The A0 stepping uh, 980X Golf Towns were much better on average compared to retail CPUs, at least for single threaded tests. But yeah, I have uh, Rampage Extreme already uh, mounted and ready to go. The best motherboard for the Conroe CPUs would be the Asus P5 E3 Premium, based on my uh, tests and findings, especially with the E6750, much better results than with Rampage Extreme, but for air and water testing it shouldn't matter that much. So we should be able to hit the same maximums on air and water cooling with both motherboard models. But for LN2, if the CPU seems reasonable, the P5E3 Premium would be the better choice in the end. But yeah, so let's put the CPU on the socket, let's turn on the system, let's hope that everything works and let's uh, see how the CPU looks like in the BIOS and in the operating system. Okay, so let's press F1 to end the setup. Looks pretty uh, normal to me. Let's go to system information. And look, we can see Intel Core 2 Duo CPU 6600 at 2.4 GHz. So it is E6600, but very interesting batch number as uh, it's not like by far the, no the oldest batch number I've seen among uh, E6600. I've actually tested one engineering sample even before this, so it will be very interesting. From overclocking perspective, the uh, first thing you need to know is the uh, FSB. But uh, let's actually uh, let's try to uh, boot the CPU at stock settings, see how it looks like in the operating system, and then afterwards we can uh, start to overclock the CPU. When it comes to overclocking, you need to the CPU needs to be able to do high enough FSB. The very best. E6600 CPUs can do like 580 to 590 on air and water cooling. The CPU needs to be able to do at least 5, 550, I think, because, this, because the FSP doesn't scale overly much on uh, LN2. So if you cannot do high enough FSP, you can't really reach the top speeds on LN2. But yeah, let's go to the operating system. Okay, so if you open up CPU Z, at first glance, there doesn't seem to be like any difference whatsoever. So Intel Core 2 Duo E6600, Conroe architecture, VID is at 1.325 volts, which is a bit higher than on my record CPU. Specification is Intel Core 2 Duo CPU 6600 at 2.4 GHz and with engineering sample marking at the end. The instruction sets are all the same as on the retail CPUs, but the only difference that we can see is the uh, stepping or revision. So this seems to be an EO stepping E6600, whereas all of the retail ones 
are B2. These two and these two are all are the same as on the retail CPUs and the stepping over here is 9 versus 6 on the retail CPUs and revision or step, stepping however you want to call it is EO compared to B2 on the retail ones. So uh, now the question mark is that does this stepping or revision update have any advantage in overclocking? The core speed by default is all the same and so on. We could try to run uh, let's say like pi fast very quickly or maybe uh, w prime see uh, how do the temperatures etc look like but i normally on 775 i wouldn't trust these temperatures overly much they are usually bucked especially when you go uh, below the ambient room temperatures and so on but looks to be like uh, how it should be so uh, I think we could just go straight to the overclocking, check the FSP first, and then afterwards test the maximum like air and water overclocking on the core for Pi Fast and W Prime. But yeah, looks pretty straightforward. These are usually very uh, simple to overclock in the end. CPU ID is 0x6f9. Pretty interesting. Okay, so as I said, the first thing we want to see is the maximum FSP. If you ask me, the CPU needs to be able to do at least 550, but uh, more preferably more towards like 590 and 600. So 550, use the lowest multiplier for FSP testing. We only want to see that does it post. Like uh, you only need to be able to get back into the BIOS. You don't need to test the uh, actual stability of this FSP. It doesn't really matter. So uh, SKUs I will leave uh, auto for now, strap we have already selected the uh, strap through the memory frequency so 1834.78721 and 1.4 volts on the V core, 1.45 on the VTT and PLL I've set manually at 1.5 plus, 1.55 NB and uh, very easy on the memory voltage. So let's try to post and boot these settings or well post these settings back to the valves and uh, we can then push from there but this will determine a lot about the CPU just by doing this okay so sadly the maximum uh, FSP seems to be somewhere around 500 I tried like 510 515 and even higher but they just don't want to post sometimes you may have uh, some uh, like FSP gaps but I definitely double check those so uh, from FSP perspective this CPU doesn't seem anywhere near the target we want to look for, like for LN2 overclocking, etc. The core itself might be good, so uh, let's test that next. The uh, level where my current top E6600 is uh, has been somewhere around like uh, 3.9 GHz and 1.4 volts on water. For FSP, CPU PLL doesn't uh, seem to matter that much on the E6600. I managed to post and boot 590 on my best one, even with like 1.5 volts on the PLL. So uh, yeah, so now I, I also checked the uh, CPU settings, but they didn't really gain or give anything. So now let's try to run like 4 gigahertz straight away. So 4 gigahertz at uh, like 1.4 volts. We can then easily determine if the, if the core itself like could be good. So uh, 1.4, 1.45 on VTT, 1.55, 1.73, 7.87 on the memory. So uh, let's uh, try to post and boot these settings. <sighs> okay, so it doesn't seem that good. So FSP doesn't really want to go any further than 500 megahertz. I even tried the second BIOS on this Rampage Extreme by removing the CPU ID of this particular uh, chip. So uh, 6F9. When you do that, the whole rig goes into unknown CPU state, so it asks you to update the BIOS, etc. But it didn't really affect the overclocking at all, both FSP and core. So FSP maximum is somewhere around 500. When it comes to core overclocking, the maximum seems to be somewhere around 3 GHz. So uh, 500 times 6 runs these tests quite fine. I tried to boot multiplier of 7 and 8, but they just uh, don't want to boot to the operating system at all. They just give like blue screen, etc. 
multiplier of 7 would mean a frequency of 3.5 gigahertz and the very best E6600 CPUs like my current one can do close to 4 gigahertz with 1.4 something volts so uh, the EO stepping E6600 is nowhere near in terms of quality with the very best retail E6600 CPUs maybe that's why the EO stepping never made it to the retail market could very well be so uh, overall as now we can pretty much wrap this whole thing up the EO stepping E6600 doesn't offer anything in terms of overclocking it is pretty much a fancy collector's item and that's how it is I think I might still try it on the P5E3 premium but I'm not expecting any gain uh, whatsoever when it comes to overclocking so uh, based on my like knowledge this far when it comes to E6600 overclocking on air and water both motherboard models so Rampage Extreme and P5E3 they reach pretty much the same end result both FSP and uh, core overclocking as I already mentioned earlier I could post and boot 590 on my current CPU with Rampage Extreme on air and water cooling I mean so yeah so that's pretty much it I'm not, I'm not sure if I'll keep this CPU or will I sell it at some point later on but uh, yeah if you like to see this very uh, rare and fancy E6600 CPU on my channel then please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel the CPU is pretty interesting in the history of 775 uh, platform and CPUs but yeah doesn't uh, have any like uh, importance when it comes to like legacy 775 overclocking at the end but yeah thanks for watching one of my videos once again and i will see you on the next one